Above the habitation door there are two control panels. The left control panel operates the hot water system and the central heating system. This button here does everything. So it does have a small click backwards and forwards. So to operate the system, press the button. The motorhome symbol is flashing. This is for the central heating system. Press the button again. You see it says off. Put this up to say, for example, 20 degrees. Press it again. And the system will now start up and maintain a temperature of 20 degrees. If we move this one small click to the right, this is the thermometer, this is for the hot water system. Press it again. You have a choice of systems, you have eco, you have hot, boost. The one that's of interest to you, is the main one to use is the hot water. So simply, simply press hot. And the system will now start up and heat the water up. Turn this dial one small click to the right. This is for the power source. So if you press this again, you have a choice of gas uh, and electric, an electric mix of gas and electric. The main one to use, the simplest one to use is gas. So press gas again and that system will now start to operate. If at any time you make a mistake, this is the back button. You can press this button here to go back. Uh, don't go into any of the tool settings. The system now is above that line is flashing to tell you that the system is working. Once the system has been operating for a few minutes, uh, you can now shut it down. It's safe to shut down. So it's very simple. Press the button again. Press it again. And this now is to turn off the central heating system. You simply do this by turning the dial, go down to off, press off. Turn the dial one click to the hot water system and turn the hot water system off. And confirm, press the button again. And the system will now shut down automatically. It might take a few minutes to shut down eh, because the system needs to, to cool down. Also remember that uh, this system will operate even when the engine is running. So always make sure you turn this off before you start the engine. This can sometimes create a fault, which means you need to give us a call to, to clear the fault. And also if you leave this running, it will uh, eat up lots of your gas uh, very quickly. Above the habitation door, there are two control panels. The right hand control panel controls all the electrics inside the motorhome. To press the button, press this button here to press it on and the system will light up. Up here the top left hand button is for the awning light. This is the exterior awning light. Switch it off again. These two switches here are for the master switches for all the lighting systems in the motorhome. This button here is the water pump. This uh, pressurises the water system. So for example, if you go to the sink and open the tap, there's no water. It's probably because the pump isn't on. I'll switch it off. Here, this F is for the fresh water tank. And the, the fresh water tank is currently quarter full. If we go along to here, this is for the waste water tank, which is currently empty. This tells you here that the laser battery is in fair condition with 12.3 volts available. Up here this tells you that the system is operating off the laser battery. The system can also operate off the vehicle battery if required, but it's always best to use it off the laser battery only. You can select this switch here. This uh, can move down and you can check the condition of the vehicle battery, uh, which is poor at the moment with 12.2 volts available. To switch off the system, simply press the button and it goes off. Just remember that every time you switch off the engine, it will also switch off uh, the control panel. So after running the engine, you will need to press the control panel back on to power up the systems.
on the escape motorhome the main control panel is above the habitation door the button on the left switches the system on it's an LCD screen so everything's very clearly and easy to see the first one here is for the pump and to switch it off again is there the pump is to pressurize the water system so for example if there's no hot water or cold water at one of the taps it's because the pump's not on the next system uh, is the awning light which is on and again put off this is the outside awning light the power lets you see what power is available uh, the left hand side is the leisure battery which is showing 3.1 volts and the little sun sign uh, is saying that uh, it's being charged by the solar panel at the minute the, the solar panel gives you an idea here of what amp we're just putting into it the right hand one tells you how the vehicle battery is and how much power the vehicle battery has to go back to the main screen you press the home button and this takes you back to the main screen the next button shows you the water system and this tells you how much fresh water is in the system and where the how much waste water you have to empty the waste system the water you just simply press this button then go to confirm and that will now open the waste valve and, and dump your waste water be careful not to select to empty the fresh water obviously that will empty the fresh water tank to go back to the main menu press the button up on the left this shows you here the it's 25 degrees inside the both room at the minute and 14 degrees outside this gives you the date and the time uh, the L means leisure battery and it's shown the battery is full and it's currently being charged by the solar panel the right hand battery the V is for vehicle battery which shows it's also 100% full this system automatically switches off when you start the engine so every time you start the engine you will need to restart the system to switch it off hold this button in for three seconds and the system will shut down To operate the television, first of all you need to make sure the television is plugged in to the electrical socket and on the bottom left hand side of the television there will be a red light. When you use the control panel you can press the power button here and that will turn on the television and the light will turn green. The television will come up, probably show no signal so it will need tuned in. So to tune in the television you need to go to the quick start guide which is here press that and it'll ask you various questions you press OK on the centre button here press OK on everything and the system will now look for available television channels also be aware that uh, this, the television will also play DVDs. To play a DVD you will need to go to the, the source button which will bring up uh, a DVD or for a USB port and you just press select here OK for whichever one you want to watch. Remember if you want to watch the television programs again you need to go back to DTV. If the TV comes up saying there's no signal, then attempt to help to try and get a signal. So the motorhome is fitted with a telescopic aerial. So what you simply do is unscrew this gland and pop the telescopic aerial up through the roof and this will help to try and get a signal. You also have a small handle here that you can turn. This is a fine adjustment you know, to try and help get a signal on the television. Remember before you actually drive away to pull the aerial down into the travel position. The travel position is where the green is facing the front of the motorhome. Remember to tighten it back up.
All our motorhomes are fitted with electric flush toilets. The whole bowl can turn round swivel either side to give a little bit more elbow room. If you lift up the toilet to open the system, you pull the lever to the right hand side. Do your business. There's an electric flush. Place the button here. That flushes the toilet. And you can then close the system again and put the lid down. Here is a red light. When this red light comes on, you must not use the toilet. That's it. To empty the cassette, simply lift this lever up all the way and the toilet cassette will come out. To empty the cassette, swivel the tube around, unscrew this button, the tap, press in the air button and empty. Once you've done that, fresh water in here, give it a good vigorous shake and empty it again and keep doing that till the water runs clear. When you refill this with chemical, the chemical always goes through the spout, never in through the bowl because it damages the bowl. So to put the cassette away, push it all the way back in until this clicks into here and it's locked into place. If when you come to take the cassette out to empty the toilet and it doesn't come out, it gets stuck, say to about here for example, it's because someone's left the toilet blade in the closed position. That's it. All our motorhomes are fitted with LPG systems, so you can refill the bottles at an LPG station. In the, the cab of the motorhome under quick start, there's a guide there to where all the LPG stations are. There's two bottles. Uh, one should always be open. Uh, this one, to just turn this, you turn this anti-clockwise to open it. And that's this bottle open and this is feeding the system. If this bottle runs out, uh, for example, all you simply do is open the next one. And the next one is opened by doing exactly the same, same thing. And that uh, gets your reserve bottle. For topping up the bottle, simply remove this here cover and connect up to here. There's a guide here that tells you exactly how to actually connect up to the system. This is exactly the same system as a fitted to an LPG car, so there shouldn't be any problems. Sometimes when you fill the bottles, the gauge won't come up all the way. All you simply need to do is give the bottle a shake and the gauge will come up to full. The gauge is really a guide, it's not, uh, they're not that very accurate. All our motorhomes are fitted with uh, night blinds and fly screens. For the fly screen, just pull this down and click it into the bottom and that's it. Uh, this is on a spring, so remember to hold this in place. If you let it go, it'll ping up and could possibly break. The night blind's exactly the same, you pull this down click it into place and that's it. Again remember to hold on to that. Uh, also we don't recommend let children touch the blinds. All our motorhomes are fitted with double glazed windows. To open them press in this button, turn this round and to release the window. There's three catches. To open the window push it away from you till it clicks in that position. To close the window again, don't pull it or you'll break the window. You simply just push it away from you and let the window close and push it back into position. On all the three catches, there's two positions. There's a ventilation position which is here. This is maybe for night time to let a little bit of air into the motorhome. And this one here is a travel position. The habitation doors are not uh, on the central locking system, uh, it's made by manually by a key. So to lock the door, turn it up to the top and bring it back to the horizontal, remove the key and the door is locked. To unlock the door, put the key in, turn it down, then back to the horizontal and that unlocks the door. Doors are on central locking. The top button unlocks the door and the bottom button locks the door. 
So to lock the, the cab doors, press the button and the cab doors are unlocked. To open, press the top button and this releases for opening the door. If you need to get under the bonnet to check the oil and water, the bonnet catches here in the passenger side dash. For to fill the vehicle or diesel, open the cap, insert the main ignition key, it's the one that starts the engine, insert it into the lock, turn anti-clockwise and this releases the cap. To put it back on again, put it back into place, turn it until it is, then turn the key clockwise until it's locked and close the flap. Remember it's diesel only. Just before you drive off on your motorhome on your holiday, we'd like to make you aware of four points that some customers have problems with. The first one is the width of the vehicle. You'll notice that from this corner here, the mirror, to this, this corner mirror here, it's an extremely wide vehicle. We lose about 30 mirrors every year from the motorhome. The mirrors do fold in, so you can actually pull each mirror in from each side. To make the vehicle less wide, you have a, a camera here, a rear view camera, so you can still see what's going on behind you. So if you find yourself on a road, there's a possibility of someone coming around catching the driver's mirror or the passenger mirror, then you can pull them in. Just be aware that on the single track roads, that, uh, there is parking places, and just be careful not to slide off into the soft ditches in the parking places. Also, if you're on a road and there's no white line across the middle of the road, that's a warning to you, the road's not wide enough for two large vehicles. So just to make you aware of that. Can just make you aware of the, the second thing, and one of the most important things, is when reversing the motorhome, not to use the camera. The camera doesn't give you a full view of what's actually behind you and how close it actually is. So when you're reversing the motorhome, always make sure the passenger comes out and guides you. The passenger should be able to see your mirrors, that way they can guide you back without doing any damage. This is extremely important and uh, it is annoying for us when someone brings the motorhome back with the back end damage because they didn't get out to get a guide. Please get a guide when you reverse the motorhome. Number three is to make you aware of tail swing. Tail swing is when you make any adjustment on the steering wheel. Any adjustment you make on the steering wheel, this will swing out. To give you an example, we take the distance from the middle of the wheel here to the end of the motorhome. The tail swing in these vehicles are 1.5 meters. What that means in reality is that if you take 1.5 meters from here to here, if there was a car in here, this area here, when you turn full lock to the right, this will swing out to here and would hit the car. So you need to make sure you're at least two metres away from anything when your vehicle turns. It's similar to having a ladder on your shoulder going through a doorway. You can't turn until the back ladder is past the doorway. The motorhome is the same. Also remember the fuel for filling up the fuels on this side. So when you're going to fuel up, don't drive in like you would with your car. Stay at least two metres away from the pump. This means when you drive out, you're not going to hit the tail end with the pump. It's quite common to get this corner of the motorhome damaged. So just to make you aware of that. The last thing to make you aware of is damage to this side of the motorhome. It's usually caused by getting too close to branches and trees. Bear in mind that Scotland is full of trees and branches. So you need to be very careful. Anytime you pull into a lay-by or off the road, or on campsites or narrow roads, you need to be aware of the damage that trees can do to the side of the motorhome, especially the acrylic windows. If these windows get damaged, they are, they are expensive to replace and they're very easily damaged. So please be aware of that. Uh, nor with the driver's side, we don't get any problem with the driver's side normally. It's always the passenger side. It's important to make sure you stay away from the trees. That's the last thing to tell you about on the motorhome and the possible problems you might encounter. 
this is to try and avoid these problems. So we hope you have a holiday, a nice holiday. Thank you.